All right, so we are awaiting the start of a hearing, as we've been telling you all morning long. Uh, George Floyd's brother, as well as the family's attorney, will be speaking to congressional lawmakers. It should be starting in just a few minutes. Floyd's death has sparked a nationwide outcry for police reform. The House Judiciary Committee hearing on police brutality will feature 12 witnesses. Some uh, will appear in person and others will appear virtually. So CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist Antoine C. Wright is joining us. Um, now, certainly, Antoine, there's been a robust, um, informal conversation, nationwide conversation about the issues uh, in regards to police brutality and inequality. This is a more formal situation now. What are Democrats hoping to hear from some of their the witnesses they have called, including George Floyd's brother? Well, several things. I think it's important for the public to know. Uh, that this is the best example of what I describe as the consequences of elections. We all said the 2018 midterms would be consequential, and minus the Democrats having the majority, I'm not sure we will be in this moment of having a public hearing so we can hear some of the things that have been going on for far too long. I expect a true temperature check and a reality check uh, to be brought forth today with these hearings. I think there are people in this country who've gone numb to some of these things. And in all reality, uh, Vlad, is that I would probably say that we have lumps in our carpet in America because some of these things have been swept under the rug for far too long, and it's causing us to trip up every time one of these things are exposed by way of the camera. So I think you'll see that. But more importantly, I think you'll see the Democrats on the committee really flush out this idea of moving from uh, activism activity to governing activity, giving, giving credit or putting concrete around why the legislation they put forth uh, just a few days ago is so important, why we need structural change in the criminal justice system from a totality standpoint, and why, that, why we bring certain people in uh, to express their concerns with how the system has not treated them in such a way and how it's impacted their families. I think we'll feel and see all of that today. Antoine, any possibility at all uh, for some kind of bipartisan legislation, uh, given that it appears that Republicans uh, are as concerned as Democrats with uh, what they've seen over the past couple of weeks in terms of the anger that people have, uh, the change that people want to see. So the fact that they're both putting together some bills, is do you see a possibility uh, that you can uh, get Nancy Pelosi um, in a room with Kevin McCarthy and, and some kind of bipartisan legislation can be hammered out or not going to happen given how polarized everything is these days? I, I think the external temperature around, uh, around us uh, gives room for the thermostat to be adjusted to do something in a bipartisan manner. The truth, truth of the matter is Democrats, Republicans, black and white, regardless of geographical location, are frustrated about some of the things that continue to happen in this country. We see that from the diverse coalition of people who are out in the streets protesting. We see Republican and Democratic lawmakers speaking up and speaking out about some of the things that are going on. And I think that gives room. Uh, for Democrats and Republicans, people with differences on how we fix the system to come together and flush out the things we agree on. And I think when we look at all of these issues, whether it's criminal justice, health care, education, they should not lean with a partisan lens because they impact Democrats the same way they impact Republicans. So let me ask this, you this question um, now that you, well, you brought that up. But is, certainly, um, Democrats have been criticized. Um, uh, I think uh, Mitt Romney called this Justice and Policing Act um, messaging. But even others, people who are reliably vote Democrat, have wondered what has the party done for African Americans? It looks good, like the kneeling, like the kente cloth, but. Are we going to see any real concrete change? I want you to respond, uh, Antoine, to the people who say, oh, the Democrats are taking, um, you know, the black vote for granted, and there's a lot of talk, but not enough action. I know you speak to these lawmakers. You know where their heart is. You advise them. What do people need to know? Well, I think people need to understand that losers do not legislate. 
uh, or say it a different way, you cannot govern if you do not win. We have the majority in the U.S. House of Representatives, so we can pass legislation all day, every day. We know the so 400 and some uh, bills that sit uh, on Mitch McConnell's desk that came from the House. If we do not win elections in the Senate, if we do not win races down the ballot, some of the implement some of the things we want to implement. And some of the things we want to fix that have been broken for a very long time in the system will never be fixed unless we win. So I think that's so important. To say that Democrats take any constituency for granted, I think, is the biggest bunch of bojangle I've heard in a very long time, particularly the most loyal constituency in a, ge in a generation, black voters. African-American voters have been loyal to the Democratic Party because I believe when we are able to govern, the policy prescription we put forth and we advocate for is very reflective of what the African-American community needs are. And I would say that's why every election is so important. And that's why we have to participate at certain levels to send the message that we care about governing just as much as we care about the idea of governing. Uh, Antoine, um, the, one of the questions that I have is, uh, if you watch a little bit of that interview uh, with Nora O'Donnell, the anchor mm -hmm. of the CBS Evening News and former Vice President Joe Biden, she asked him if what we've seen happening over the last couple of weeks has changed his mind about who he might be looking at as a potential running mate, as a potential vice presidential uh, running mate. Uh, he said no, because uh, that would indicate that this was the first time he was aware of some of the things that people are angry about in the streets. But do you think that there are some calculations that are happening behind the scenes? As I look at a live picture here of Jerry Nadler uh, getting ready to call this committee hearing into session, um, Antoine, so we may end up cutting you off if it starts, uh, sure. although there's a lot of preamble before these things get rolling. What are you hearing about that, vice presidential nominee, given that you just said how reliable um, Democrats, in particular African Americans, and in particular African American women, are to uh, the Democratic Party? I think Joe Biden, more so than any other person who ran for this party's nomination, understands how his bread was buttered. Uh, he would not be the nominee without African-American voters. He also knows the importance of not just tapping into a woman on the ticket, but tapping into a woman that's very reflective of the heart and soul of this Democratic Party, African-American voters. So in that regard, I don't think his move or his conscience has changed. What I do think uh, has happened as a result of all the things going on around us is the need for a person on the ticket to be able to speak to the experiences of people who are going through some of the pain that we've seen people around this country go through. And I think there's a heightened sense of urgency around picking someone who walked in the shoes of those certain type of experiences and will be able to articulate those on not just on the campaign trail, but also when Joe Biden wins the White House from a governing standpoint. Antoine, I want to get you to answer this question because I'm really curious about you. So your take on this whole, this whole conversation about defunding the police. Um, yeah. The phrasing, I think, at times uh, is almost a gift to uh, this law and order president, as he puts himself, because I think there's a lot of confusion about what it is that yeah. is being called for. Can you explain when people say defund the police, what are they saying? Well, first and foremost, when Republicans want to defund government, they call it tax cuts or trimming down the fat in government. So we've been we've seen them do it uh, in other ways when it comes to cutting necessary and critical funding to agencies that really, really matter. But I think when people use the word defund the police, it gives political ammunition, I think, to Republicans to use it against us in the court of public opinion. Uh, I would probably say it a different way. What I would say is let's demilitarize the police. Let's make structural changes to the system. Let's invest in more community policing, uh, not necessarily cutting law enforcement, because all of us agree uh, that we need law enforcement to keep us safe. I do think that we cannot get into this argument and start framing things to give Republicans ammunition to use against us in, in, in the fall elections. Uh, but I don't think when you hear the term defund the police, it does not fundamentally mean let's take money away from law enforcement. I think it means let's redirect funds that could be used for other things within law enforcement in order to help make the idea of law enforcement work in this country. 
All right, Antoine Seawright, my friend, always good to talk to you. Brother, looking good with the hair, too, that uh, Rona hair. I really Very, like very it. good. I actually, yeah, I think, it, I think I'm saving some money. it's working for you. I'm saving some money. <laughs> <laughs> good on you, good on you, brother. <laughs> Uh, all right, thank you, Antoine. We appreciate it. Uh, we're looking at a live picture there of Jerry Nadler. He just gaveled in this hearing on police brutality where we expect to hear from George Floyd's brother. Let's listen. And we will circulate the materials to members.